Hey my friend, this is Darnell Clark, your industry expert in this career game, The Answer Man. Hey, today's topic is why you must become a free agent in your career, just like LeBron James. So stay tuned. Hey my friend, this is Darnell Clark again, your industry expert in this career game, The Answer Man. Hey, today's topic is why you must become a free agent in your career. Yes, a free agent, just like a sport athlete. That's what you are. You are a business athlete. You are no different than LeBron James. You have to become just like LeBron James. You, my friend, are a free agent. We are a free agent nation. Just like you and just like LeBron James, you will have to take your talents to the highest bidder in the marketplace. So what is a free agent nation? A free agent nation is we are independent workers who operates on our own terms. We are untethered to any one organization and serving the marketplace instead of one single organization or one boss. The social contract between employer an employee is over and loyalty is dead. You, my friend, have no loyalty to the company because you're going to quit in a heartbeat and the company has no loyalty to you and it will downsize you in a heartbeat. The loyalty between the company and the organization and the organization and the employee is over with companies downsizing and laying off and the end of lifelong job security, you must be in charge of your own career. You must create for yourself value, your value and a value add proposition to the marketplace and what the marketplace is looking for. You must create it to thy own self be true means loyalty and being loyal to your own best interest. That's your responsibility. You are free from the bonds of any institution and you are the agent of your own future. You are the new aristocrats, the new prototype of how we will work in America in the future. So, uh, so how do you become extraordinary, wonderful, remarkable, amazing at your job? How do you become like LeBron James and the best free agent in the game? How do you become the best person player at your position. How do you do that? So if you don't know me, my background started as a professional athlete at the Philadelphia Phillies. I went to a university in Nebraska on a baseball scholarship. After three years in Nebraska, I got drafted by the Philadelphia Philly Major League Baseball organization. And before my career ever got started, I blew my knee out. But while I was at Nebraska, I, when I was in high school, I played center field, but Nebraska wanted me to play second base. And, and so during the first fall season coming in, 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 in Nebraska, I had to learn how to play second base. So when they first started hitting me to, to ground balls, man, I was taking it off my chest. I was taking it off this part of my chest, my stomach. Uh, it was hitting me in my head. <laughs> it was hopping up and, and, and tearing my wrists up. And then it would ricochet off my wrist and hit me in the chin. Oh my God. <laughs> one time, the, the, one of our power hitters hit the ball so hard and I came up on it too fast and it tore my ankle up. I said, that's it. I just didn't want to do it anymore. I'm going out to center field and if you don't like it, Nebraska, well then I'm going to go home. <laughs> I was so irritated. And then the, the next day in the locker room, the senior second baseman who was in front of me, I wasn't going to start that first season. I was going to start the second season. I was going to learn from the senior. So the senior came up and said, Darnell, come out with me and the infield coach, and we're going to teach you how to take ground balls, how to receive ground balls. See, I used to think you supposed to catch it. Now they was like, how do you receive ground balls? So they say, hey, leave your glove in the locker. I'm like, well, I, I, we need to play. I mean, how can I take ground balls if I'm not going to uh, take it in, my, in, in, in a glove? What, what am I going to do? Just take it in my bare hand? And they say, yeah. I said, that's going to hurt. <laughs> they said, don't worry about it. And so we got to second base. 
my coach took a, a, about 50 balls, dumped it all out, and took the, the, the pail, the bucket, and turned it over and sat on it. I'm like, what are you gonna do? I, how are you gonna hit me the, a ground balls that close? He said, we're not doing that. We're gonna teach you the actual forming, the format and the actual strategy and way you actually catch ground balls, how you see ground balls. So he showed me, how do you take your feet apart? You know, how do you uh, put your hands out? How, what do your eyes look for? What are your head supposed to do? What are your hands supposed to do? And for two weeks, he rolled ground balls to me. Ground ball after ground ball after ground ball showed me exactly the technique. All we were working on was technique. How to be the best second baseman in the country. Not in the league, right? Not on the team. Always the best second baseman in the country. And for two weeks, he was rolling me ground balls. Then he said, okay, go grab your glove. And then he started rolling me the ball with my glove. Right? Then he started hitting, him, hitting the ball soft to me and taking me uh, so I could understand how to receive ground balls. What is the actual technique this, to receive ground balls? What does my eyes supposed to be looking at? What does my hand supposed to be doing? What does my head supposed to be doing? How do I position my, my feet? How do I position my hips, my butt, my back, my shoulders, my arms? He showed, he broke it down to, to the nth degree. And then he start taking, then I start taking actual ground balls. Now, I didn't start that first year. I wanted to be able to start the second year. So in the beginning, I start taking 25 ground balls a day. Then I start taking 50 ground balls a day. Then I wanted to be the best second baseman in the country. So I start taking 100 ground balls a day. Do you know how long it takes to take a hundred ground balls? Hour, hour 15, hour and a half. Man, you, the first day I did it, my back was hurting, my knees was hurting, my ankles was hurting, my butt was hurting, my shoulders were hurting. I started getting a bone bruise on my hand, my arms were hurting, my shoulders was hurting, my, everything on my, on my body was hurting. But I came, and I came through the next day after I spent a whole night in the ice tub because I was, I was wore out. And every day I took a hundred ground balls. The next summer I'm playing in a, in a baseball tournament in Topeka, Kansas. In Topeka, Kansas. And so uh, we're playing a tournament. The other team's second baseman you know, caught me at the end of the game. My, my number was nine. He said, hey, Niner. <laughs> he said, how in the world? See, when, when I was in Nebraska, the senior second baseman used to receive the ball so smooth. I used to say, man, how do you take the ball so smooth? And he said, just keep taking ground balls and you'll get that way too. I'm like, no way possible. He said, when I first came to Nebraska, that's what he said, when I first came to Nebraska, he was the same way. He was herky-jerky, he wasn't smooth. He thought that he would never be a great second baseman, but he learned from the other guy that was there before him. Now he's passing it on to me. So in Topeka, Kansas, this guy said, hey, Niner, how do you take ground balls so smoothly? I'm like, who, me? <laughs> like, who, me? Yeah, yeah, you. He said, I have never seen Somebody receive ground balls as smooth as you. He said, it does not matter how hard, how soft, do you backhand, do you forehand, on the right, on the left, front, back. He said, it does not matter where the ball is coming and how it's coming, you receive the ball the same way. He said, how do you do it so smoothly? He said, I said, 100 ground balls. He said, what is that? I said, a hundred ground balls, you, you take a hundred ground balls a day to become the best second baseman in the country. He said, in the country? I said, in the country. Just like you. Your hundred ground balls might not be the actual hundred ground balls, but you need to find out what it would take you to be great at your job. 
You need to understand what do you have to learn, what books you have to read, what workshops you have to go to, understand the industry. You have to become the best free agent at your position in the country. That's what you are supposed to do. And if you do that, then you could go to the highest bidder, just like LeBron James, because he is the best at what he does. That's right. Find out what your 100 ground balls is, your 100 ground rule, your 100 ground ball rules, and engage it and become the best at what you do. Play your position. Be the best person at your position. And if you do that, my friend, I promise you, you will go to the highest bidder in the marketplace every day single time. Now, as always, if you like engaging with me, go to my website right down there and give me your name and email address to be part of my tribe, to be part of my community. And if you do, I got a, something special for you. I got a three part series called How to Play This Career Game to Win. It's awesome. Get it. You really, really will love it. You will receive it with gladness. I promise you will. Now, for you who want to engage me even more on the right side of your screen, on the left side, where I'm on, on your right side, on my left side, is the subscribe button to YouTube. Subscribe to my channel. And as always, if you want more information from me, ask me questions. I will give you the answer because I'm Darnell Clark, the answer man. You ask me the question, I will give you the answer. So until next time, identify your 100 ground ball rule and become the best free agent in the marketplace so you can go to the highest bidder. This is Darnell Clark, your industry expert in his career game, the answer man saying, go get it, bye.